organizations known as the AFL-CIO. Uh, it's really good to have you on the show this morning. Joe, we'll have to look at how this impacts politics. Yeah, we will. Uh, but, but, but Liz, I, I wanted to ask you, we talked about this before. Um, as everybody knows, unions helped build and, and, and create the foundation of the middle class, the American middle class in post-war America. Uh, and uh, through the 50s into the 60s, union membership grew. Uh, as, as the new president of the AFL-CIO, you've been going around asking, what do we do to grow our membership? How do we become more relevant today. Uh, wh what are the answers to those questions? What are your members telling you? What are I know you wanted to t you want to talk to small businesses. You want to talk to big businesses. What are you learning? Well, you said it, Joe. This is the time uh, we need to be looking inward and saying, how can unions be the voice for all working people? Um, certainly union members who are out there uh, running our economy every single day, but there are a lot of working people out there who haven't yet found the power of a union. So can we be uh, the center of gravity for workers who are looking for that next opportunity? Uh, certainly there's a lot of um, fluidity in the economy. Can the labor movement be the place where workers come to find those good jobs and make sure that they're getting the pay and benefits and security that they deserve. Steve Ratner was on yesterday showing charts which showed that income disparity is not as bad as it was. Things are getting a, a, a little bit better. But if you look at the small percentage of wealth that is controlled by 50 percent of Americans, the so-called bottom half, it's staggering. It's so low. Now, listen, as you know, I'm a conservative. I don't believe in income redistribution, but I also don't believe in billionaires becoming trillionaires. Uh, how, again, how do you guys make the sell to people who aren't getting paid enough money while, uh, the, let's say, tech giants and other people are just, you know, raking up uh, billions and billions of dollars? Absolutely. I mean, coming out of COVID, you see these corporations making record profits, historic profits. Uh, workers were making sacrifices. They were working overtime, doing more with less. You just saw a nurse's strike in New York because they aren't getting the support they need to do their jobs. Uh, so I think the economy is out of whack. Uh, I saw the charts this week um, that inequality is, is still off the charts. Um, people are continuing to lose ground because workers don't have the power they need to negotiate better conditions and wages uh, on their own. You can do that better when you come together, strength in numbers collectively. And certainly through a union is the best way we see to do that because you have the law on your side. You can sit across the table from your employer and demand more without the fear of retaliation or being fired. So we believe this is the new era. More people are recognizing that unions are the way to come together collectively and flex their muscle. Um, because certainly coming out of COVID, people are still struggling. Uh, people are still working one, two, and three jobs just to make ends meet, never mind getting health care coverage and retirement security. Hey, Liz, good morning. Jonathan Lemire. It certainly is an interesting moment for unions. We, of course, had the railroads strike earlier this year, the threat with the president weighing in, stepping in there. Uh, president, who is, of course, very pro-labor in his rhetoric, but did draw some criticism for his behavior there. Feel free to weigh in on that if you'd like, but also just the idea of inflation, um, which has, by most measures, cooled, but still remains very high. In terms of your workers, what sort of impact are they telling you they feel day in and day out? Yeah, I have the opportunity to talk with workers every single day. And you're right, the inflation numbers are, you know, getting better, but workers are still struggling because we're seeing it uh, day to day at the gas pump. We're seeing it in food prices. And working people just want stability. They want the economy to work for them. And what they're seeing is corporations, uh, you know, price gouging. Um, certainly the, um, you mentioned the railroad issue. Um, those railroad companies were making billions of dollars historic profits, but yet couldn't give their workers a single sick day. Uh, so I think this is about equity. This is about um, having a voice at the table. And this is about workers needing more power to right the scales of the economy.